Hi, welcome to plant-based eating and weight management. If your goal is to lose weight, you may have assumed that adopting an entirely or mostly plant-based diet would be an easy and effective way to shed excess weight. However, there might be several factors that prevent this from happening. And so let's talk about what to do, what pitfalls to avoid, and some general tips that you can implement right away. <clears throat> So we'll cover managing hunger, whole foods, protein, carbohydrates, what to do about fruit, fat, portion control, dirty options, liquid calories, loading up on non-starchy vegetables, refrigerator preparation, and tracking food. The best way to get to and maintain a healthy weight is to manage your hunger. The fix to hunger of course, is to eat, but not all foods are created equal. You want to choose foods that do a better job of filling up your stomach and signaling your brain that you're full, such as high volume vegetables and proteins that provide uh, essential vitamins and minerals. So highly processed foods, while providing a quick surge of energy and calories, often lead to cravings and eating more. Over 25 years ago, a group of researchers developed the satiety index and satiety is that sense of satisfaction and fullness. And they came up with this list of foods ranked by how well they keep someone full and satisfied over two hours. The scientists determined that the amount of fiber, protein, water, and the sheer bulk of the food determines the satiety. So this is the key to manage hunger with high satiety foods full of fiber, protein, water, and bulk. Let's keep this in mind as we talk about what to eat while trying to lose or manage your weight. Again, fiber, protein, water, and salt. All right, so you want to eat nutrient-dense foods. These are whole, real foods, as minimally processed as possible. There are high in vitamins and minerals, unprocessed vegetables, and low-sugar fruits, for example. These nutrient-dense foods, they trigger satiety, that sense of satisfaction and fullness, keep you full longer while giving your body all the vitamins and minerals it needs with fewer calories coming along for the ride. So these give you the I'm full signal much more quickly. When you eat foods with low nutrient density, the processed foods high in sugar and vegetable oils, for example, your body doesn't get the nutrients it needs. So then it continues sending out those hunger signals, which leads to overeating, hoping that you'll eventually provide the nutrients that your body requires. So ensure that uh, your meals are comprised of a variety of whole foods. If you keep it simple, you'll be able to stick to it. Don't be fooled. Just because it is plant-based doesn't mean it's healthy. So many food companies are slapping the plant-based term on numerous foods that are often highly processed, dense in calories, and filled with chemical-laden ingredients. So check the ingredients list. Aim for five or less. And be careful of the plant-based burgers, freezer meals, baked goods, packaged desserts, and vegan cheese. Your best bet is really to stick as closely as you can to whole plant foods. All right, let's look at each macronutrient, protein, carbs, and fat. All right, protein is essential for good health. Protein is an important macronutrient that is involved in nearly all bodily functions and processes. It's used to create tissues, form enzymes and cellular transporters, maintain fluid balance, and more. So how does eating protein help fill your weight? Well, as we stated, protein is highly satiating and the most satiating of all the macronutrients. So you feel full longer. How much should you eat? There are various calculators online you can check out or talk with your doctor for your specific needs, but generally you want to aim for 0.4 to 0.5 times your ideal body weight and slightly higher amounts if you're an athlete. So for example, a woman with an ideal body weight, which is just a range based on height and gender, of 140 pounds would aim for 56 to 70 grams of protein per day. In order to get that, you want to consume protein at each meal. In a study published in the journal Nutrition Metabolism, when vegetarian dieters added more protein to their diet so that 30% of their daily calories came from protein, they automatically ate 450 fewer calories a day. 
and lost about 11 pounds in 12 weeks, even without adding more exercise or making any other adjustments. Here's some top vegetarian protein sources um, and some common serving sizes with the grams of protein. The flip side of this is to consider how much you have to eat in order to get 25 grams of protein. So for example, uh, one, key, one cup of Greek yogurt, one cup of cottage cheese, four eggs, one cup of lentils, one and a fourth cups of tofu, 100 almonds. We'll talk about tricking food in a second, but you want to ensure that you're getting enough protein. All right, let's talk about carbohydrates. If weight loss is your goal, a major pitfall may be overdoing the carbohydrates. You must avoid the refined carbohydrates, bread, pasta, desserts. Studies show that <clears throat> Refined carbs can spike blood sugar rapidly, leading to hunger, cravings, and increased food intake in a few hours. In one study, 12 subjects were evaluated on three separate occasions consuming meals, breakfast and lunch, that had a low, medium, and high refined carbohydrate makeup. So, for example, the low carb meal was a vegetable omelet, the medium carb meal was steel cut oats, and the high carb meal was instant oatmeal. Then they were allowed to eat as much as they wanted for dinner. And they found that after the high refined carbohydrate meals, participants consumed 81% more food compared to when they had low carbohydrate meals and 53% more than when they had the medium carbohydrate meals. So set yourself up for success by avoiding the refined carbohydrates. Uh, one note on a specific carbohydrate, fruits. If your goal is to lose weight, you should avoid high sugar fruits like bananas, grapes, pineapples. I know even though it is natural sugar, it will still spike your blood glucose levels and lead to a drop in blood sugars causing cravings and increased appetite. So try to limit the fruit to special occasions. And if you must indulge, seek out unsweetened low sugar fruit like strawberries, blueberries, raspberries, kiwi, melons, lemons, limes. There you see the list of some common fruits and their sugar content. Think healthy fats and not too much. So vegetarian meals are um, often incorporate nuts, seeds, nut butters, avocados, or coconut. And while these foods are incredibly nutritious and filling, they also provide nine calories per gram compared to four calories per gram for protein and carbs. So for example, two tablespoons, that's 32 grams of peanut butter packs a whopping 191 calories, 140 of eight of which come from fat. And what's more, many people eat more than the recommended serving size of nut butters and other healthy fats. You also want to watch your oil consumption. It is the most calorie dense food by volume. One cup of oil, which most of us are not sitting down and drinking, but one cup of oil contains almost 2,000 calories with no fiber and no bulk. In cooking or on top of salads, you want to aim for one tablespoon per day. Healthy fats are essential. Just be mindful of how much you're eating. Um, and this brings us to the next topic. Even if you're eating a whole plant-based food diet, you can still overeat. In particular, on the nuts, the seeds, the dairy, grains, if you're looking to lose weight, you should measure and ensure you're eating just one serving. So here are some guidelines if you don't happen to have the measuring cups or spoons or a scale on hand. One serving of nuts and seeds is a quarter of a cup. That's the size of a golf ball or your cupped hand, or two tablespoons of nut butter, which is about the size of a ping pong ball. These are high in protein and healthy fats with a bit of carbs, so it's very satiating. However, they are also very easy to overeat due to low volume. So pre-portion out the nuts in little containers or baggies. Measure out the nut butters. Don't spoon it directly out of the jar because it's way too easy to overeat. Cheese, cream, sour cream are often the default options for vegetarians, but beware because high fat cheeses can contain up to 120 calories per ounce, the size of your thumb or four dice. Heavy cream, has 52 calories in a single tablespoon. And these, the cheese and the cream, are both very small portion sizes. So think about a serving of a cream-based soup or a cheesy lasagna and how many servings of cream or cheese that you are really consuming. It can be quite a bit. 
and for lower carb, high nutrient grains such as quinoa and wild rice. Starch vegetables include potatoes, corn, peas, beans, lentils. One serving of grains or starch is generally a half a cup cooked, which is not a lot. It's about the size of a tennis ball. You may want to mix non-starchy vegetables with the grains or starches to bulk up the amount and reduce the carbs and calories. Remember, even complex carbs break down into simple carbs, which will be stored as fat if they're not used up for energy in the body. So overdoing it on cereals, breads, pastas, grains, and beans can hinder your weight loss effort. Okay, when you make yourself an omelet or a simple salad, you generally assume you're consuming a healthy vegetarian meal. Unfortunately, eating protein sources like eggs and dairy that aren't pastured and certain vegetables that aren't organic might be working against your weight loss efforts. Pesticides uh, sprayed on food may disrupt your hormones and endocrine system, which could work against your efforts to stay fit. So for that reason, vegetarians should try to stick with animal products that come uh, from pasture-raised animals because they're able to graze on grass and worms as opposed to being fed pesticide-ridden corn and soy. And you want to avoid the dirty uh, dozen, the Environmental Working Group's top 12 most pesticide-laden fruits and vegetables. And they also have a clean 15 of the least pesticide-laden fruits and vegetables. Avocados, onions, broccoli, asparagus, cauliflower, cantaloupe, Etc. And you can find these lists at www.ewg.org. If your goal is to lose weight, do not drink your calories, especially in sports drinks, sodas, and other sweetened beverages in alcohol. These provide empty calories. In other words, they provide you with no beneficial nutrients and you don't get a sense of fullness or satiety when drinking. And regarding alcohol, it can actually stimulate your appetite because it decreases inhibitions and undermines your willpower, causing you to eat more than you planned. And that's not what you want if you're trying to lose weight. Instead, drink water in all of its various forms. Okay, load your plate with non-starchy vegetables. Here you can see how vegetables more readily signal the physical sense of fullness in your stomach. Veggies aren't only nutritional powerhouses, but also the food group that's lowest in calorie density. They are full of fiber, bulk, and water, and averaging only 100 calories per pound, they fill you up without filling you out. So vegetables such as kale, cabbage, spinach, lettuce, those are especially beneficial because they contain a compound called thylakoid, which can actually turn off your hunger switch and help fight cravings for unhealthy foods. You want to aim for 50% of your meals to be non-starchy vegetables. Again, you're looking at implementing Brussels sprouts, zucchini, broccoli, cauliflower, asparagus. So many options I could go on. Onion, summer squash, spaghetti squash, celery radishes, all lettuces and greens. These plant foods are low calorie, high nutrient, and their bulk water, fiber, volume can help you feel fuller and more satisfied. Non-starchy vegetables can also be substituted for starchy vegetables like potatoes, sweet potatoes, butternut squash, and lentils, or starchy grains like rice or couscous, so you eat less. So as I mentioned, you can also add them to any greens you cook to create a half-grain, half-vegetable dish. Um, also, vegetables like bell peppers, mushrooms, celery, and artichoke parts, they dilute down the final carbs that you eat uh, and leave you feeling good. There are a number of vegetable swaps you can try. So these days, the vegetable rice, such as cauliflower rice, broccoli rice, they've become so popular that you can even buy them ready to steam in these sealed packs in the supermarket. They, they are everywhere. Prepare your fridge. So you want to remove unhealthy options from your kitchen. And don't leave your meals to spur of the moment decisions. And you don't have to write out a plan or spend hours on a Sunday meal prepping unless you enjoy this, then for sure you should. <laughs> but you should at least keep healthy food on hand so you don't end up getting the vegan pizza delivered every night. Convenient foods to keep on hand include the frozen vegetables, pre-chopped vegetables and lettuce, canned chickpeas, oil-free hummus and sauces, 
and low sugar fruit. With a well-stocked kitchen, there's no excuse not to eat incredibly delicious plant-based meals that will help you on your weight loss journey. Okay, track your food intake. So how much are you really eating? You might be eating a lot more than you think. It is especially helpful for vegetarians and vegans to track their food while embarking on a weight loss journey to ensure that you're getting enough protein, vitamins, and minerals. That means track everything you put in your mouth. It is a tried and true strategy for weight loss. The key is to track absolutely everything that you ingest. Be completely honest with yourself. You might be surprised at what, when, or how you are eating. And it's a great tool to bring awareness to your eating patterns and choices. Some people find it more helpful and useful to use a tracking app to input your food the night before or in the morning to plan out your day. Again, this is a great strategy to plan for uh, success. And then here, I'm showing here in a study published in the journal Obesity, scientists found consistency is key. The more often participants logged in to track their food, the more likely they were to lose weight. It is all about bringing awareness to what you are eating. You can try my fitness pal, lose it, chronometer, and not every day will be perfect. And maybe you just need to log for a few days or a couple of weeks to get a better sense of what you are eating. In conclusion, manage hunger with high satiety foods with fiber, protein, water, bulk. Eat a variety of whole foods to ensure you're getting the nutrients you need. Eat enough protein to support bodily functions. Avoid the refined carbohydrates. Eat fruit as a treat. Mind the fat, high quality and not too much. Control the portion sizes. Avoid the dirty options and think pastured and organic. Limit the liquid calories. Load your plate with non-starchy vegetables. Prepare your fridge with uh, healthy options. And track your what you eat to bring awareness and ensure you're eating healthfully while trying to lose weight. Please feel free to reach out. Here's my contact information and resources. Thank you so much.